Somebody goes to anti submarine action station. Submarine is located by air control. The attack begins. The Mediterranean East needs them. The Atlantic East. The coast of Britain needs them. Yet even as they draw away, new boats are built. New boats are finished. Help swing the tide in the battle of the sea. Under tow, engines silent, the Fairmile B launch RML 497 parts the waters of the River Itchen in Southampton. She's on the next stage of her journey, to a new home. In her day, she and her sisters were built in their hundreds, fighting World War II at sea as coastal forces warships. RML, Rescue Motor Launch 497's main task was to rescue downed pilots and air crews far out at sea. Now, the National Museum of the Royal Navy has come to her rescue. After this last voyage, RML 497 will be placed on a purpose-built cradle so that she can be taken north to the National Museum's base in Hartlepool. That cradle is to be her new home so it's been designed with considerable care. It was a very fragile vessel, and to counter that, we had to take things, certain things into consideration in our design. One of those were to follow the original docking plan as best as possible when we were designing the cradle, and the other one was to introduce a special material between our cradle and the RML 497, which was a specially made foam. All that attention to detail has produced what can only be described as an impressive piece of kit, standing ready at the Empress Dock in Southampton. Gently, the pressure ship is brought alongside as darkness falls in the Empress Dock. The first part of the voyage is over, and it's the last time she will have her hull in the water, and a special moment for those who've cared for her, preparing for this day. Well, I have worked on her for three years, and so I have forged quite a relationship with her. And it's just great to see that she's just as excited and game for this project as I am. She's going to the National Museum of the Royal Navy Hartlepool. At the moment, we've got our ship HMS Trincomalee up there, a real gem. And she is going to be in good company because RML 497 has got a fantastic story to tell. She's going into her own bespokely built building just for her so people can see her and we can perform conservation on her hull. RML 497 will hitch a ride north on the giant barge Terra Marique. She's one of the UK's most standout working vessels. Marique's stern ramp lowers, and the barge takes water into her ballast tanks, sinking her down like a submerging submarine. At the same time, water floods the cargo compartment holding that special cradle. Next, RML 497 is slowly floated in. A key task follows, making sure that the fair mile stops just where she has to be, floating precisely above her cradle. The last piece of the jigsaw is a support to go under 497 stern to carry the weight of her transom. To put it into position, a diver goes down into the water inside the barge. Once that's done, all the water inside Terra Marique is pumped out again to let 497 settle down onto the supports built to hold her fast. Everything must fit perfectly. It could be a rough voyage ahead, and she's a veteran lady. With the fur mile in such a fragile state, the surveyor has put a weather limit on us, uh, because over a certain sea state, the Terra Marine will slam quite a lot, and that will transfer a lot of forces into the fur mile, and I don't think that she will be strong enough to withstand that. It's not only those who care for her now, in her latest incarnation, who are taking an interest in 497. Also on watch is 94-year-old veteran Norman Fowler. As a 19-year-old sub-lieutenant, he served at D-Day, supporting the US Rangers' famous cliff-climbing assault at Pointe du Hoc. 
He has vivid memories of his service in a fair mile, in more ways than one. In a smaller boat, it was a more lively motion. It was a much more intimate um, situation. There were four officers aboard and a crew of about, about 12. The feeling was more family rather than authoritarian. Two days and a lot more hard work later, RML 497 and Terra Marique head out of Southampton towards Hartlepool. After a four-day voyage, Terra Marique arrives in Hartlepool, bearing her precious cargo. Welds that held her steady in her 400-mile voyage must be freed and the ship checked, ready to be jacked up for this 16-axle low loader to slide in underneath for her first journey on land. Night has fallen, but the work goes on. Tomorrow is the day for RML 497's final arrival at the National Museum of the Royal Navy Hartlepool. So now she must come ashore in the dark and in the rain. A new day, and RML 497 is on the last leg of her journey to a new home and her new life. For those welcoming RML 497 to Hartlepool, this is a moment to savour, filled with hopes for the future. It's, it's a great addition to the town. It will uh, certainly boost tourist numbers and an attraction, and the plans for it will look great once it's completed. It means a great deal because it takes our narrative um, away from just the Georgian Navy, which we do at the moment, and obviously right out into the World War II, into the 20th century. Now, you know, we can tell a much broader story of the Royal Navy. In her wartime career, rescue motor launch RML 497 made many a welcome landfall, rescuing servicemen who feared their last hour had come. Those who care for her believe this will be her happiest landfall yet, as she and the National Museum of the Royal Navy bring to life the story of the Fairmile, Britain's Greyhounds of the Sea. <laughs>